he shows his hair. There we go. Recording's been started. Fantastic. All right. Let me see if anyone's calling in. Let me pull up the Skype window. Somebody give me a call. First person who comes on the air, we'll go ahead and get it started. And uh, I tell you what, while we're waiting, some of the people uh, talking, I, I see we got Callan out there. Is that Callan from, the, uh, from Left 4 Dead? How many of you guys out there play Left 4 Dead? I love the delay as I have to fill the time. It's a whole different art. I guess if it was radio, I would just totally talk as if, as if uh, there was somebody there in the room with me all the time. Oh, yeah, a lot of 360 players. I'm also trying out, forgive me if, uh, if everything's a little bit sloppy, we're trying, I'm setting up the new studio here. Um, we've dedicated one room, we just moved into the house, everything is super sloppy, totally messy. I wish that, uh, I wish that uh, everything was looking a little bit better, and uh, forgive me if I slow down from time to time as I am trying to, hey, there we go. Can't get the Ustream chat to load, says Callan. What's up with that? I don't know what's going on with that. And... Uh, Let's do this over here. So, uh, <laughs> Radzak says the, uh, says the background was sweet. sweet. There we go. Callan's in the chat. Hey, by the way, for those of you guys wondering to, uh, to join the chat, you want to fly, do slash N-I-C-K slash Nick space, write your new name. That way uh, I'll be able to read your comments. And I apologize. It's very difficult to be performing for the camera and also glancing down at the, um, at the chat. Long term, we're going to be having somebody to kind of co-host and handle facilities for this kind of thing, but for right now, it's just me. Uh, as a matter of fact, for those of you who haven't heard, uh, we actually have a right-hand man who's moving down to Austin. His name's Mike Galante, and he's actually going to be in the next episode of Scam School, so you'll get to see him before, uh, before the next live chat, probably. Uh, nobody's calling? It was Oh, here we go. We got Andrew S. on the line. There we go. I turned off the, uh, the ringer because I didn't want you guys to hear ringing all the time. Okay, what do we got here? Are you there, Andrew? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. Hey, fantastic. Is that too loud? How's Andrew? Let's get Andrew about even there. Andrew, you got video? You, if you got video, I can bring you in here. Right, give me two seconds. I've got to turn on my eyesight. All right, there we go. So coming in from a, from a Mac, I guess. That's okay. It's very difficult to get all this stuff working with the PC because everyone, everything out of the box is very fancy for Mac. But we got, we got a little bit of fanciness for the PC. For example, here's me and uh, Please Stand By, my best buddy over here. Uh, and in fact, let me switch this over to camera four. And uh, how's that coming over there, Andrew? Hey, Andrew, where are you from, buddy, while you're working on that? Uh, Florida. Where in Florida? Uh, southwest, close to between Tampa and uh, Naples. Did you, uh, did you make it out to Halloween Horror Nights while I was out there? Um, no, but I followed your Twitters to it. I uh, wasn't able to go. No. <laughs> no, but I did read about you backstage. That was kind of fun. Almost like watching. <laughs> How are we doing on that on that video business right, there? So. Yeah, give me a second here. Well, I tell you what, while you're working on that, Andrew, I will go ahead and take a quick question from the uh, from the chat room. Anyone in the uh, oh, you guys busted that as being a beer. I thought if I picked it up and then went fast enough. Oh. Then you'd think, oh, he's drinking Diet Pepsi, but not, not so much that. Sorry about that. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely get a, a webcam because one of the things with magic is very difficult. You could talk about um, uh, what you're working on and what you're trying to make happen, but it's totally different and I think superior to uh, to actually show people. For example, I want to see you guys skyping in, and we can actually try doing the uh, the, the the human chimney and you know all that stuff. It's it's a very interactive art, and it's hard to deal with it just verbally when you're describing what's going wrong and, uh, and what's going on. Okay, uh, question, do I, think I, do I think I will continue in magic my entire life? Good God, I really hope so. Um, it's, uh, I, I really dig performing and doing live stuff. One of the things you got to remember is that scam school, as much as I love it, uh, that's actually not my day job. I, couldn't, I don't think I could quite uh, make a living the way I do now just by doing online stuff. Although I love doing this kind of stuff. I want to do more of it, and that's why we've dedicated the studio. I'm going to start doing live events and uh, hopefully expand into other, uh, into other areas beyond magic. But as you know, I host the lecture, the Scam Sasquatch and the Supernatural. I'd love to put together some kind of Scam School live event show, uh, but I think magic will always be a part of, uh, of what I'm doing. How you doing, Andrew? You look totally black. I was not meant to be racist. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to fiddle with. It. I'm working on it here. All right, 
That's cool. Well, I tell you what, let me do, uh, let me do this. Uh, you monkey with that, and I'll go ahead and take another call. If anyone has a video camera ready to go, I'll go ahead and bring you on. I'm going to hang up on you now, okay, Andrew? All right, cool, thanks. There you go. Andy's gone. Uh, this will be so much easier when I have somebody actually doing this full time, and all I have to do is worry about uh, being the monkey in front of the camera. And I just realized I was looking into the wrong camera because I don't have fancy cameras with lights on there. Who do we got? Somebody, I tell you what, does somebody just want to call in with, a, with an audio question? Go ahead and call in with an audio question. I tell you what, if you don't have Skype and you don't want to install Skype, you can even call me at 866-EAT-FIRE. Let me go ahead and hold on. We're going to do this fancy style. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Let's throw that on there. You can call 866-EAT-FIRE. Press 1 for Brian Brushwood. It'll give me a call on the, the phone. We'll try to patch it in. I don't know how well that's going to go. But uh, first choice is definitely hoping people have, have the video set up so we can get that going. By the way, uh, what did you guys think of the new uh, strength school? We had a bit of a departure from our regular formula with the scam school. Normally it's all about you know, me getting drunk and doing magic at the bar. But this time we actually did some uh, learning outside of that stuff with, uh, with Dennis Rogers. And by the way, I don't know if you've seen any of, uh, any of his other stuff or headed over to his website. That guy is, is a freak of nature. He is unbelievably strong. It is amazing. So Boldfire said it was great. Good tricks with Dennis. was a cool episode. I like hearing all that. Uh, let me... There we go. There we go. BB Show Live doesn't work from D-Man 11. I tell you what, it looks like i got to put out a fire because I put bbshowlive.com to forward to this page, but for some reason it looks like some of you guys were here and some of you were not. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, you guys get your calls and stuff ready, and I'm going to uh, try to entertain you with what I believe is far and away my greatest uh, adventure ever. Hi, I'm Brian Brushwood. I tour all over the United States performing America's number one college magic show. I do stuff like fire eating, escapes, mind reading. These are the stories of what happens on the road. Somebody else could do something that I can't. That's a dare, my friend. Thank you. Oh. No, no, no. He said Simon could disappear from any bathroom anywhere. And I said, you know what? Give me two minutes. I'll be right back. You'll fall on my head. Yeah, we're, we're sitting there on the couch and we're like, he's like, Brian's in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened next. The camera's on the floor. It's Seth's head hurt and Brian's on the floor. <laughs> I would say that's not good. <laughs> oh, oh. That's how he did it, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that was kind of exciting. <laughs> All right, so, tonight, White on Extreme uh, Hotel Makeover. <laughs> Hold that one up. Everything could be cleaned up. Uh, actually, no, that's not the lesson. The result, everything can be cleaned up. The lesson, don't ever do that again.
All right. Let's see if we can salvage something out of this business. Sorry for that mix-up right there. That was kind of fouled up. Uh, yeah, apparently I wrote BB Live Show instead of BB Show. Oh, no, BB Show Live instead of BB Live Show. Sorry about that business. Okay. Oh, Sandman asks, uh, says, uh, only watched Scam School. What are the other projects online? Uh, I guess um, uh, for about a year I did something called uh, Brian Brushwood on the Road, which was a bunch of episodes of uh, hijinks and or shenanigans while on the road uh, touring all over America. Um, I actually had a lot of fun doing those. I don't know how marketable it was. It was pretty much me being a total jackass. Uh, there's also an hour and a half long lecture called uh, Scam, Sasquatch, and the Supernatural broken into a bunch of uh, segments up on YouTube. If you just search for Scam, Sasquatch, Supernatural, or Brian Brushwood uh, scams, you should be able to find that. Okay, so uh, yeah, in addition, so, uh, so I do have BB Live Show correct for this one, but uh, I am a total idiot in that uh, you'll see here I actually put the Skype thing, uh, hold on, for this stand-up, I actually made, I was giving you guys all the wrong information. Yeah, there we go, that, that there, totally wrong, bbliveshow.com. No, wait, that one's right. Sorry, where's the wrong one? There we go. Skype, the Skype there, it says BB Show Live, which is wrong. It's BB Live Show. For those of you guys uh, Skyping in, it's bbliveshow.com, uh, or not .com, just BB Live Show on Skype. And uh, did, anyone, uh, did anyone get their video working, ready to join on that chat yet? Because the whole purpose is to answer questions. Maybe if I wasn't drunk, it's a good call. You know what? This is the first, uh, actually, this is the first one of the day, and it's only about half complete, so uh, we'll take care of that right there. Anyone making some uh, New Year's resolutions? I actually, uh, <laughs> Pepper's Ghost, no, I'm not lying. Radzak, you want to come on in, Radzak? We'll talk, we'll, uh, we'll float this for a little bit until we get somebody, uh, until we get a call from somebody uh, who has a question on Skype, or don't forget, you can call at 866-EAT-FIRE. Yeah, audio questions will be fine. You want to call in, Callan? You got it. Learn a new scam every day. That is a hell, actually, that's not an impossible thing to do. There are a lot of tricks. Here we go. We're going to bring Callan on the air. Callan, how are you doing, buddy? Pretty good. Fantastic. Yes, I can. Can the folks at home hear you? That is the real question because they are the important ones, not me. There we go. Okay, so Callan, uh, uh, how, how did I end up meeting you? I know we play uh, Left 4 Dead. Did we just run into each other online? Is that how that happened? I'm, I'm pretty sure you were on just on Twitter. You were really just yelling out. You told. I'm sorry. I'm having a bit of Ustream trouble here. I'm, let me shut this off. Oh, you're here. You know, through Twitter, you just posted your. Steam ID, and I was like, ah, maybe we'll play some, play something with Brian, then, you know, Left 4 Dead came out, it's like, awesome, so, a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, dude, for those of you who aren't, uh, who aren't playing, uh, uh, who aren't playing Left 4 Dead, uh, it really is, it's a phenomenal game, uh, and, uh, and the versus mode is downright addictive, being a total, a total, um, uh, I guess douchebag would be the appropriate word, <laughs> a total griefer. Did you have a question, Cowan, or were you just calling in to help me float this thing until we get a real question about scams? Uh, actually, I, I did kind of have a question, maybe not about magic, but like uh, I remember at the beginning of Scam School, you were um, uh, you had your book. I can't remember which book you were um, uh, Chief floating Scott's out Scandals there. Chiefs, Tricks, 57 Ways to Scam a Free Drink. Yes, there we go. And um, yeah, we had. I know you were. You're throwing that out there. I'm sorry, I had another conversation going on in the back. Um, I can't find that like anywhere at all. It's yeah. just kind of a personal question. It's, there. it's actually and not available. Uh, I mean, you could get one from me directly. Uh, I think I was doing a deal where if you would PayPal me like five bucks to cover shipping, I'd send you out on me. Um, you know, I I made those uh, because I had all these ideas, and I just I literally wrote the book in a week. I just vomited out, you know, hey, here's a bunch of great ideas. In fact, most of the scams in the book have actually become episodes of scam schools. But it's one of those things that I didn't feel so good about it that I wanted it to be the book on scams that I wrote. So uh, uh, the, the ISBN number that's on the back of it is fake. It's not a real ISBN number. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's something I just had 
like 10,000 of those printed up and I sell them individually. So you can write me at brian at and uh, uh, I'll take your money and eventually send one out to you. It may take a little while. Uh, but, uh, but that's something that I do mainly as a promotional thing. And what it's been great for is now I'm, I'm trying to pitch the idea of actually a scam school book. I think it'd be a fantastic uh, uh, book because we're, we're coming up on 50 episodes now. So I'd love to do a couple of pages per episode and actually do it right. And that's something I'd feel good about being out there on Amazon and, and, and out in front of everyone. Scam School awesome. DVDs is a great question as well. This one's coming out of the chat room. Uh, I would love to do Scam School DVDs. And in fact, uh, I, I talked to Jim Louderback uh, talking about the book idea. And he thought it would be great if, if we included a DVD, a complete DVD archive of all 50 episodes included with the book, which I think would be phenomenal as well. So we're actually uh, we're talking, to, uh, talking to people trying to uh, hustle up some interest in actually doing a book. So we'll see. <laughs> Somebody points out that, yes, you can actually just burn all the episodes to a DVD. But what I think would work better is if we re-edited and then maybe for each episode had a supplemental uh, segment where we actually talk about uh, what we learned doing this, what was difficult about the, sh the shoot, kind of a director's commentary type thing for that. Cool. Did you have anything else then, Kellen? No, not really. I, I wish I had... Oh, I'm kind of in the middle of moving everything. I don't have everything unpacked, but yeah, I have my quick, my quick Cam Pro, so I can't really... No. Yeah, no, I'm the same Throw way. Uh, it's like I, I, I've had webcams just sitting in, in, the back of, um, uh, in the back of my closet forever, and I can never be bothered to pull them out until finally I got a laptop with one built in. But now that we're trying to do it properly with the studio here and everything, uh, went ahead and got several of them uh, and have them all hooked up here. Yeah, I, cool. like I, I have an old Xbox Live cam, but it looks like work? ASCII can, can characters you, when you plug, plug in, it in. So. Can you plug in an Xbox Live cam to your PC? Yeah, you can if you have the drivers for it. That's bad, yeah. It's easy to install. Well, what are you waiting for, bro? I can, I'll look for it. I right. might be in a box somewhere. Yeah. You know, okay. I have to look for it. Cool. All right. Well, uh, take care, Callan. And uh, we have open lines here. If anyone has a question, specifically what I was looking for is somebody who's interested in um, uh, learning, having difficulty learning a particular trick, wants to actually uh, get some detail. Oh, the Skype name. Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, D-Man, it is BB Live Show. BB Live Show. Here, I'm going to go ahead and write it down in all caps. Is it BB Live Show? Sorry for the mix-up there, D-Man, on... Uh, no, oh, I see. You just you just gank in my, yeah. There we go. And unfortunately, I had a nice little graphic that popped up and said uh, that explained that it was a BB Live Show. Unfortunately, you can see uh, right right here. You can see it says Show Live, and that's not what it is. As as D Man will attest, it's Live Show, BB Live Show. So ignore that. So what I'll do instead, and keep in mind, if you don't have the Skype thing, you're welcome to call me at 866-EAT-FIRE, and I'll go ahead and try to patch you in. Question from the, from the group says, uh, do I watch any magic vidcasts? And uh, no, I actually don't. And I've talked about this. Uh, I take that back. Actually, I tune in, I tune in whenever iTricks does a live chat. I love uh, hopping in and, and giving them a hand over there. I don't know how many of you guys check out uh, uh, iTricks.com, uh, but they, they run a fantastic site. It is the it is the hub of all things magic. If you love Chris Angel, if you hate Chris Angel, you're going to get both doses of news from him. If you love uh, David Blaine, if you hate David Blaine, uh, if you love buying tricks off the shelf, if you hate buying tricks off the shelf, it's you're, that's itricks.com is, is the warm fuzzy center of, of, of the universe. Uh, and as well as another great one is a, a, a linking page, um, uh, magicnewswire.com. They do fantastic podcasts. I love uh, Dodd Vickers does a tremendous job on that one as well. So I guess when I said no, what I meant was yes, clearly I do go to two websites with great frequency. Make sure to check out uh, Don Vickers, Magic Newswire, and, uh, and also itrix.com. Uh, Radzak, Radzak claims that, uh, that I love David Blaine, and actually I am a recovering uh, David Blaine hater. I used to be uh, pretty bad. On, uh, on the hate and David Blaine train, but, uh, but I've gotten much better about it now. As I've come to respect, I, I think maybe seeing uh, Chris Angel had something to do with it. I got an idea of uh, just how rough it could be with, uh, oh, is you, you know what? I'll tell you what, while we're waiting on a call, here's what I think of David Blaine. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. You had the traditional magician action figure.
you. All right, kids. There's a big surprise in this hat. Then you got the weirdo magician on the street. Hey, watch, watch this. Watch. Pick, pick a card, sir. Now you need Brian Brushwood. Brian Brushwood. The number one bizarre magician is now your number one action figure. Create his greatest escapes. Face the bed of nails. Impress your parents. If you think that's amazing, with the stage show action pack, you get Fiery, the human blockhead with real hammer action. And with the Mr. Happy Pants attachment, you're in charge. Or so. Other magicians are totally lame. Only Brian gives you the real bizarre magic experience. Sayonara, hack. The complete Brian Brushwood experience comes with everything you see here. Not responsible for damage caused by happy pants laser vision. Not for use for pregnant women or women who may become pregnant. This product has been found by the state of California to cause brain damage in laboratory rats. From Arlocks. There you go. So that... Yeah, there we go. So that uh, that's what I think of David Blaine. I think my action figure can kick his action figure's ass. Although he probably actually has a pretty kick-ass action figure. That's not an official David Blaine action figure. Just in case you guys were thinking, hey, that Brian one's dumb, but uh, am I in a bunker? <laughs> yeah, uh, it does look like it. This is, yes, I'm deep underground, 40, 40 floors below sea level in my uh, underground center of the universe. That's a good question. Where did I come up with Mr. Happy Pants? I actually bought, uh, that's actually a very rare collector's item, uh, voodoo puppet. And uh, the guy who, invent, who created those is actually dead now, which makes it even more mysterious. He's a crazy uh, puppeteer, and he, he made all these puppets. No two of them were exactly alike. And, uh, and I got the one that ended up being Mr. Happy Pants. And I had this vague idea. I'm like, hey, it'd be kind of fun if, like, you know, I had a really cute name for him, but he turned out to be, like, mean. And, uh, and so I'm like, I know, I'll call him Mr. Happy Pants. And I thought, oh, I'll come up with a better name le later, which I never did. And uh, uh, I pulled him out, and, and I used to just, just pull him out, and he'd go, Rawr, I'm Mr. Happy Pants. And he was just mean and angry. Nothing supernatural, though. And that wasn't playing because, uh, especially at the time, like South Park was big on Mr. Garrison doing the, the Mr. Hat thing. And it was, it was just way too similar to that. And I was trying to think of, of how I could uh, take it up a notch and actually, uh, you know, I was like, what can I do? And all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute. What if he wasn't, you know, just mean? What if he was pure evil? And uh, I went to the guitar center. I said, I need something that uh, makes a, that'll make my voice sound like the devil. I bought this distorter. And the whole routine completely popped out of my, my, my mouth fully formed. I've never had anything like that. It was just, it was amazing. I was just riffing on it for my friends. And, uh, uh pretty much Mr. Happy Pants was born. Pretty much the way I do it now is almost exactly the way I did it, just goofing around that very first time. So, uh, oh, yeah, it's somebody, you guys coming on in. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. That's, that's what a tool I look like with, uh, with... Hi, guys. I'm Brian Brushwood. Would you like to see a trick? <laughs> that's why, uh, that's why. Yeah, there we go. Give me a call, Zach. We'll go ahead and bring you on here until, uh, until we make something happen. Anybody who actually has, uh, yeah, I agree, it is, it is creepy. Uh, which, and actually, for those of you saying Alex Albrecht, that was something I really worried about when we started doing scam school, was that there would be some uh, crossover trouble. There we go. And joining us on the air, the host of Bottles, Blends, and Bruised, Mr. Zach Louie. How are you doing, Zach? Good, good, good. You? Yeah. I'm doing well, but uh, hey, do you, uh, oh, there we go, and we even have video. Yeah. Hold on, let me see if I can... Wait for it, wait for it. There we go. We are all kinds of high tech here. I thought you might want to test out some video on the stream for your uh, viewers. I like that. Hold on. We're going to do that. And uh, there he is, Mr. Zach Louie. In fact, we'll go ahead and do that. And now I finally get to use, wait for it. I was very excited about this one. There we go. Oh, the split screen action. That's right. Not just nice. the split screen, though, but you can see like uh, like it's total talking head. Is it not true, Mr. Louie, that you it is true. have a lot of B's in the name of your title, and I have a lot of B's B -B -B. in my name? B -B -B. Coincidence? 
I think not, sir. How's everything going over there at Bottles, Blends, and Brews? Ooh, it's going good. How's Scam School? Uh, kicking ass and taking names. You know, uh, I've got to go out and shoot some more episodes. Is anyone out there watching right now out in the San Francisco area? I think we just locked down the next date of shoots. We're going to go out uh, at the very beginning of February. You're lucky. You get to shoot BBB anywhere you go, huh? This is true. Uh, speaking of shooting BBB, uh, um, possibly a BBB slash Scam School reunion in uh, wait, wait. Dallas or oh, in I, Austin on the 8th, correct? I, are you saying a BBB slash BB triple feature? I think that's what we're thinking about. All right. I like this. What uh, what are we gonna good. drink? Do you have something picked out? Something that goes on? Fire? I don't know. I don't know. What are we? Uh, honestly, uh, rushing with stuff. I just finished up shooting the four first episodes of the new Dajio TV thing, and uh, I'm trying to kind of I don't know get an idea of what we're gonna shoot. So I think in the next few days or so, I'm gonna get an idea for what we're gonna drink. But uh, it's possibly going to involve fire. Good. Actually, def definitely going to involve fire. I was about to say we got to do something with fire. Even even if we yes. just have fire to like warm it up or something, it's got to be the fire. Oh, definitely no. It's gonna. There's gonna be flame in the uh, solution somehow. Good. It's gonna be awesome. How uh, how's so, everything going with the launch of the new show? Are you happy with the progress there? Oh, awesome. Everything's been good. Um, you know, just keeping up with everything as as well as we can, and uh, shooting video slash editing video slash sending emails. There's really not much to talk about. I mean, no. well, I mean, do you, you know. shoot, do you shoot week to week because Scam School is a little bit different. I'm I'm on right. tour. You know, I've got the live event, and that's one of the that's one of the things I'm hoping, you know, when I'm home, it's like I'm wondering if it's possible to have a call-in show that has no set schedule. Like, like I'm thinking of setting up, and, and I have no idea if this would actually work. I'm thinking of actually setting up, um, hey, the chat room won't load, says Hector Cortez. I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Um, try, try again. Um, the, uh, uh, here's what I'm wondering. Can you have a show that has no set time? And uh, let's say it has a rigid structure, a set format. It's a show you like, but the only way to watch it is to, I guess you could watch the recorded ones, but what you do is you would subscribe to a spe special Twitter feed and you know you go ahead and tell it to, to turn on SMS for, for just that feed and all that feed did was pop in and say, hey, show's going live in half an hour today. Is that something, uh, is that, something that so. number one would work or second of all would be something that would actually, uh, people would, would watch? Well, well, first off, I mean, this, I mean, I know we tested out this stuff yesterday, but you tweeted this out only a few times, and, we've, you know, I've got to help these 62 people in here right now. So I think that uh, if you can pull these numbers regularly, I don't see how it would be an issue. As your show gains more popularity and as people start to realize how often you do this and how well set up it is and how it's an actual show, not just screwing around on live streaming, as I'm known to do at times, uh, uh, I think, yeah, you could definitely. Um, as far as the shooting schedule for, for Bottles, Blends, and Brews, we usually shoot uh, two at a time. Um, we're working more on becoming, we're shooting, you know, shooting a week in advance like the rest of the shows on Revision 3. I'm actually moving way closer to St. Louis where we shoot the show, so yes, um, they will start to be weekly. But, but yeah, so that's how we do it. I know that you guys shoot the Scam School ones crazy in advance. Yeah, we uh, have, well, we have to because, because of the crazy, the crazy tour schedule that I have. Uh, we, we go out, and we will go out for three nights at a time, three or four nights at a time, and try to bust out three or four episodes. We'll go to a bar, and uh, people don't appreciate how challenging it is. When we shoot Scam School, uh, we, we have used a few softies, uh, some friendlies, uh, some fans of the show who showed up to, you know, because they're excited for the shoot, people who are excited, but we want everything to be genuine. Uh, people always say, uh, oh, you know, Chris Angel is stuff so fake or whatever, um, and, and it's, they, they don't understand. You can't fake those genuine responses. Uh, yes, maybe it's fake in that, in that people uh, immediately afterwards are able to tell how the trick is done, or maybe it's fake in that this person didn't happen to walk up to him in the street. But what makes those shows work and what makes, what makes for, for kind of the money shots uh, are, are authentic reactions. And, uh, and to that extent, it's very, very difficult, uh, especially when we go to a bar. I would say 80% of all the people you've seen on Scam School are people who I've had to walk up to them and say, hey, buddy, want to be famous on the Internet? And uh, explain that, you know, no, no, it's, it's a legitimate show. We're actually going gonna to show you a trick. We're going to teach you how it's done. And that seems to uh, have, have worked so far, but it's highly labor-intensive. And we have a lot of shoots that ended up not going anywhere. We, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, the... Uh, 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 what, was, what, what did we do just the other day? Uh, the short change. It took, it took three 
full attempts to full on uh, do the short chains before we got something that worked, um, especially because we wanted it to be somebody who was actually working at the bar. We wanted it to, to be authentic. And, and the problem is these people are trying to run their business and, and trying to work. We had one guy who was totally fine until he understood, oh, wait, you're really going to teach crime. Well, I got robbed the other day, and I'm not so interested. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that was, that was a little bit difficult. Well, I, I, I can only imagine, because I know how labor-intensive it is to shoot a single episode of our show. I can only imagine what you guys are rocking to, uh, to knock out. What, do you, you shoot three nights usually when you're in San Fran, right? Yeah, we, we're good. We're usually good if we get about 12 episodes. And it got especially difficult with the, uh, the Halloween Horror Nights stuff. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. I mean, it was, I mean that, was, that was a black hole of my time. I woke up, I had one hour to work out, and then the rest of the day belonged to, to Universal. And, uh, and I felt bad because, I, you know, I get these calls from our wonderful producer, Eileen, at Scam School, and it was just super difficult to squeeze in even a few minutes to do a, yeah. to do a, a change or a read or any of that stuff. Well, uh, luckily our show shot on a slightly different format than yours, uh, but you know you guys are doing an extremely good job, and I think everyone digs the show. I mean, all of you guys here in the chat room, you guys like Scamp School, right? All right, there that, we go. Uh, <laughs> that there is called uh, that's called pandering, sir. And on this Sorry show, that. that will not stand. <laughs> I mean, don't but, uh, I mean, by all means go ahead and, and pander. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's all. Uh, I'm but doing, no, you know, awesomeness. I, I think you everything looks awesome. And, uh, you know, they seem to have lots of questions for you guys. Someone give Brian a delicious video call. Let's get some combo yeah, going. Yeah, I, I was hoping to get a little more uh, video calls, especially if somebody, wa even if all you want to do is demonstrate you actually pulling off uh, uh, one of the tricks, I would love to see the technique that you guys have and, uh, and try to make that happen. So I'm going to hang up. We're going to say goodbye right, to Mr., uh, Mr. Zach Louie. From, uh, make sure to go to BBB. Is it uh, bottlesblendsandbrews.com? Yes, Revision 3 Beta, yada, yada, yada. Revision, no, is it beta.revision3.com and you're on there, right? Revision3beta.com. Oh, wow. How or about I just gave a totally wrong URL? <laughs> How about that? Yeah, same thing. All right. All right, take <laughs> care, guys. Zach. That was Mr. Zach Louie from uh, Bottles, Blends, and Brews. There we go. We got some interest over here. We got Chris Johnson's uh, adding the contact. And uh, there we go. We got, uh, there must have been a good 20 of you guys who added as a contact. Uh, what's plug.plug.plug.com slash plug. All right, open lines here. You're welcome to call at uh, 866-EAT-FIRE. That's 866-EAT-FIRE. Or uh, I guess you could do 462-4224, 4 Magic 4, 462. Yeah, I don't really know. But you can call 866-EAT-FIRE. That one actually works. And uh, you can also give me a call at uh, on Skype at BB Live Show. Go ahead and add me as a contact, BB Live Show. How do you get a number like that? Uh, you know what? I got very, very lucky. Uh, shoe on head, please. What is that business? Uh, the, uh, uh, I, I got it just as they opened up the 866 Exchange. It was a brand new exchange, and, uh, and I had a list of phone numbers I would love to have. So I took care of that. Uh, did you have a beer? With the Enigma, hey, D-Man, go ahead and give me a call. Give me a call and tell me. I want to hear this story. You can call the toll-free line, 866 fire or you can, uh, you can call in on Skype. If you've got Skype and you've got a microphone, that's going to be the easiest. Then I could just pop you in, but I could definitely make it work just by calling the phone. That's sort of how a, uh, a phone-based or call-in-based format has to work. There has to be people calling in. But that's okay. You can watch... Brian, tread water. I could tread water for a very long time. There we go, Jay Pettercrew. Hey, Jay Pettercrew, wait, how do I know Jay Pettercrew? From uh, the forums or, uh, or another uh, uh, Left for Dead? Ah, New Year's in Austin was phenomenal. Now, I didn't actually go in to, to actually Austin proper. We actually went, uh, we've moved kind of out to, to the country. We can actually see the stars. We're about uh, seven miles from where city Austin is. And uh, we actually went for, a uh, went for a walk. We walked a mile down to the local dive bar, super sketchy, awesome dive bar, and uh, ended up just getting deliciously trashed and walk home under the stars. Yeah, out in the, out in the hill country. For those of you wondering, it's, uh, it's uh, about seven miles west of the Y at Oak Hill. That means nothing to anyone except for those who live actually here. At, uh, TRS Dignation asks, when do I usually play 
left for dead. And uh, usually it's somewhere between 11 p.m. and midnight is when I'll hop on and I'll usually play for about an hour at the time uh, and uh, uh, call it. Here we go. We get an actual call. Here we go. Hello, this is Brian. Hey, hello. All right, hold on just a second. I'm going to put you. There we go. We're going to see if this works. Wait for it. There we go. Are you there? I'm here. Wait, wait, wait. Say again. I'm here. There we go. Are you guys able to hear him out there? Keep talking. Who do we got here? Okay. All right. I'll uh, keep running my mouth. Hey, there we go. That's fantastic. I'm Brian. Who is this? This is Randy in Aurora, Colorado. Randy in Aurora, Colorado. I think I played. Uh, you guys have a college there in Aurora, right? Uh, we got a community college, but I know that you you you've been all over. Yeah, but it might have been uh, like that's not Otero Junior College out there, is it? Which one is that? It's just Aurora Junior or Community College. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, maybe I haven't yeah. uh, played. Uh, you you've been all over. I know, because I always miss your schedule. I'm always out of town when you're in, so. Oh, bummer. Well, that's cool. Did, yeah, you, anyways, did you have I, a question, I Randy? I call and offer a suggestion. Yes. What is your suggestion? This is from experience. You should always set your tricks up and be prepared before you participate in all the alcohol. <laughs> is this? Do you have a story to tell us about how, about how this went uh, down? Well, I was in Las Vegas with my coworkers and my boss and they were all gathered around at the bar and their uh their heavy suggestion was yeah you know do a trick you know okay all right so and this is uh what what what, what kind of bit what kind of business are you in uh software development oh okay all right uh, and so uh geeks. and now now do they know about scam school or do you keep it a secret for yourself actually i've tried to tell them about it but uh they they, they don't watch podcasts or listen to podcasts so yeah, you know, that's that newfangled web video. Yeah, well, it, it just keeps me ahead of everybody else. Yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, I had uh, unfortunately loosened uh, loosened up my uh, myself with a couple shots, and then I decided to do the the uh, water switching glasses. Oh, the uh, the whiskey trick. and water trick. The whiskey and water trick. Yeah. Okay. And um, I I totally blew the setup. Totally, and worse yet, I I had the bartender fill up the shot glass, but he didn't fill it up all the way. So you had uh, so, so you had two the whiskey. So you had yeah, so all you did was mix the two. Yeah, it pretty much sucked. <laughs> Blew the trick. That is awesome. But I tell you, you know, uh, people people think I'm I'm talented or good, and I promise I'm none of the above. What I am though is I am very experienced, and it's like I have. I've dealt with I've dealt with the exact situation you've had. I know exactly what what you're talking about. Uh, but uh, but the good news is you'll only make that mistake once. And uh, yes. and and now that you have, you know that less that lesson. So you don't have to worry about it again. So what uh, yeah. what's been the most success? Okay, that's a good epic fail story. What's been yeah. the craziest success you've had with the scam school effect? Uh, and you're not allowed to say none. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've only got fail stories. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. Well, uh, if, do you have time? We got time for one more failure story. You got something? Oh, let's see here. Well, I'm trying to think of, of everything. Um, not everything is so clear in my memory yet. It is the first. That's just, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so you went out last night then. All right. Well, I tell you what, we actually have uh, Derek Marr actually waiting on the line. So I'm going to let you go, Randy. But sure. uh, thank you very much for giving me the call. Uh, by the way, uh, if you catch me anywhere, usually I make it out to Colorado Springs. I don't know how far that is, but you're welcome to come on out and see the show, my treat. Uh, just sure. uh, You can sign up on the email list at schwood.com. That's uh, S-H-W-O-O-D. Dot com. Look at that. Wait, we got a graphic. There you go, right there at schwood.com. All righty. All right. Hey, man, take care. Have a good one. Happy New Year. All right, you too. Bye-bye. All right. There we go. Okay, so Derek, uh, you want to give us a call now? Or maybe I'll give Derek a call here. Here, actually, I'm going to call him directly. And I think it's ringing. It's ringing. Wait for it. We'll see if Derek's going to... This is D-Man 11. What's going on? Oh, he's signing in now. All right, well, from the, uh, uh, we'll, we'll take one quick thing from the chat frame here. Oh, wait, there we go, there we go. 
Wait. Here we go. Hey, wait, is that Derek? Hey, what's up? Hey, how yeah. you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing very well. Have to apologize that we did not make the epic get together happen while you were actually here in Austin. I was super bummed about that. Ah, uh, Mass Worm kept me so busy watching movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what were you in town for? You were doing the Buttonumathon. Yes, I was in town for the Buttonumathon. Uh, and so, uh, and, well, first of all, for those of you who don't know, uh, the website Ain't It Cool News, uh, is it AICN.com or you have to actually spell out Ain't? Dash? I think I, I think Ain't It Cool.com. Ain't It Cool. Now, now all one word or you got to do the dash? Yeah, here? I think that works. AICN.com might work too. Okay. Well, uh, at any rate, Ain't It Cool News uh, hosts an event every year uh, called uh, Buttonumathon, which is a ridiculous collection of, of some really interesting, bizarre movies. Some of them are oldies. I don't know, like I remember they, they showed Tron once, didn't they? I think maybe at the very first one. I yeah. don't know. Well, and now it's become a vehicle of choice for, uh, like, I think Kevin Smith just showed up and premiered a movie out of the blue. Like, what they'll do is, as a special treat, I know uh, uh, Vin Diesel, before he was quite the star he was now, showed up he and showed they, up and they showed uh, Pitch Black, right? Yeah, Mel Gibson showed up to show us the passion. No kidding. Boy, that's exactly yeah. what I want to see at, like, 7.30 in the morning after being up all night. Yeah, blood, exactly. Uh, Jesus yeah. Snuff film. That's right. So, uh, so what was the big what was the big buzz at uh, Buttonumathon this year? It was uh, the big buzz this year was stuff that uh, was was half finished things we saw. We saw half of, of of the new Pixar film Up. We saw the first twenty minutes of Watchmen, which blew my mind. Now, now, because I tell you, I've seen the trailers, and the trailers actually had me a little little bit sketchy on on Watchmen. Well, I think they're doing sort of the the. The movie is to superhero movies as the comic is to superhero comics. Okay. Go on. I think it's the easiest <laughs> way to say it. Explain so they more. all look like the giant Batman rubber bondage suit kind of costumes. Wait, well that's, but that's, so they do have those kinds or they don't? Yeah, they do. Because, I mean, that's what the superheroes wear. I mean, that's what the movie guys wear. Well, and that's, that's what had me worried is because I, I, the, the, the comic book was kind of um, – uh, kind of a rejection of all. I, well, I don't know. I guess I mean it was. It was very. They were in sort of spandex the way, same way that like Superman and Batman do in the comics, and in that very weird, unrealistic way. All right. Yep. That's a very good point. Uh, uh, look, let's get let's get ahead here. This is not a comic book show. Uh, uh, yeah. So you were down. We didn't make it happen. Sorry, I got off topic here. Uh, uh, I did see you Twitter that you tried the uh, human blockhead. Did you make that happen? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And I think I may have made one person run out of the room. Ah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, you know, I was really interested. I was surprised when I Twittered. I asked everyone if it's something that we actually should teach. And I was shocked. I thought it was a, kind of a softball. I figured, hey, everybody's going to say, yeah, of course I can teach it. But I was amazed. And usually I think it was my friends who were worried for, for my safety, saying, no, don't try it, don't try it. But, yeah, uh, I, and I tell you what, my, my sinuses have never spent a winter clearer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and I actually I used to have really bad sinus trouble and it's difficult to breathe. And I don't know if I've if I've softened my tissues over the years or what. But uh, but I actually seem to do much better now that uh, that I've been doing the human blockhead for a while. So I'm, not I'm still a little hesitant to actually pound the thing into my head. I, I can push it in, but it's the it's when you get the the hammer on there that I, I start going, oh crap, what am yeah, I doing? Yeah, that's a, that's the a difference. You know, you uh, you know, I I claim that I could teach anyone to eat fire in about 30 minutes, but, um, uh, but uh, you know, there's a difference between being able to eat a torch and being able to get on stage and, and do stuff under fire. Exactly. Yeah. Q-tip equals bad idea. Is that the question? Uh, what I was using. Well, okay, yeah. I think most, most I people do. Using. By the way, uh, two things. Is, this is very interesting to me about Scam School. It's uh, uh, the two things that far and away people were most excited to show was, were, uh, were the, the jack-o'-lantern and, uh, and the, the human blockhead. So I think people really dig being dangerous and or stupid when they do that. The, the human chimney is great, too. If you can get a big whiff of it, yeah. it's the grabbing the smoke out of the air that really, I think, sells it. Yeah, it, and it's, it's, it's a lot. And that's one of the things that kills me is most people, when they get it down, uh, what they'll do is, is they'll uh, – uh, this, is, this is – hold on, I'm going to do a quick impression here. This is every person I've ever seen who just learned – the uh, human chimney attempt to perform it. It's, it's all. Like, which is not a good effect. That's not going to fool anyone. Uh, what you got to do is, I think it's very important 
to take time with it. Make sure to break it into pieces. You, you do, first of all, you, you gotta have that breath control. So you let all that air out. And you see the difference. One is a magic effect that comes out of nowhere the other is, hey, look, I'm an idiot dumb enough to inhale poison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that does but do it. Yes, I was time. saying that, that I went to this party last night and the human enigma was there. Oh, that's right. That's the whole reason you're calling. You, you actually, first of all, where, where was this party? In Des Moines. Uh, Des Moines? Wait, 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 wait. The enigma was in Des Moines? Yeah, well, his, his girlfriend, Serena, yes. lives here. And she's friends with this guy who runs a tattoo shop I know, and he was having this big party at, a, at an artist's space, and I was like, oh, my God, he's there. And then there was also a Benedictine monk. So that was crazy. Uh, of course there is. Um, okay, I'm going to get a uh, – <laughs> for pictures, for those of you who, uh, uh, who don't – hold on, wait for it. Oh, come on. These guys know. He, he was on X-Files. Wait, well, see, that's just it. Um, You've got you to gotta appreciate uh, how long ago that was. That was almost 20 years ago. The oh, that's right. That was, was that was uh, in the late 18th century. There we go. That right there. That's the Enigma. You can see uh, very scary wearing this hat and uh, smiling creep. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. This is the Enigma over here with the blue skin tattooed <laughs> head to toe like a, uh, like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, one of the original members of the Jim Rose Circus Sideshow, which I actually, they were a huge influence for me. That's kind of what got me started. In, uh, in, in performing live because I knew how to do the human blockhead, but it was the first time that I had seen it performed on stage and that I understood that it could be an effect that would create this visceral reaction in, uh, in the audience was at the Jim Rose Circus Sideshow. So, uh, okay, so this guy, you're, you're walking, it's hard to miss the enigma, right? Yeah, it's impossible to miss him. He's, I mean, he's got, at a glance, he just kind of sort of looks like he has blue skin. Mm-hmm. But he has, you know, puzzle pieces tattooed all over his face and horns. Yeah. Well, I think that's because he actually uh, uh, originally, he was tattooed head to toe before he had the, the horns put, put in. And uh, uh, originally, I th I, what I heard was that they were steel ball bearings, uh, and now they're Teflon pieces. But what I had heard, and this is all fourth hand, but uh, what I had heard is that his plan was to eventually replace them with, uh, with custom cut uh, coral and over time, the calcium from the bones would creep into the coral, and the coral would fuse to his bones, so that a thousand years from now, he would have, he would exist as this skull with, with freaking horns on it. How See, that's that awesome. Be? I thought that was a brilliant idea. I don't know if he's still planning to do it or not. Uh, by the way, somebody is pointing out that... Uh, uh, they saw him on the Jim Rose Circus Sideshow before he was the Enigma. Uh, I did, too. He was, uh, he was originally Slug, the sword swallower, and insectivore. He would eat, uh, eat bugs and swallow swords. Uh, brilliant show that was back in the day. All right, you got anything else for us, Derek? No, I'm not, that's about it. I'm just going to watch the rest of the show. Okay, well, look, uh, I don't know how much more time we got. We're already kind of almost an hour into it. But, hey, take care, Derek. I'll, I'll talk to you Hey, later. take care. Happy New Year. Okay, we got free lines here. Uh, we're going to take a couple more calls, and we're going to wrap this up. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard, this is really just a test. You know, we uh, we set up uh, set up the studio space. We finally got everything functional. Just want to actually interact with you guys and uh, get some. There we go. Jay Pettercrew is calling. Hold on, wait for it. Jay Pettercrew, how are you doing? Doing all right, man. How are you? I'm doing well. And forgive me, I'm recognizing your name, but I'm forgetting where I know you from. Um, I was on the uh, I was on the live stream thing we did. Oh. Thing we did. On the uh, wait, hold on just a second. We've got crazy. Oh, there we go. Now we've got video. Say something again. Um. Hey. Okay. There we go. There's uh, the man. I, was, I did the. I was I was helping out with the first live stream thing you did on a uh, uh, stickum. Uh yes, That's that dirty dirty failure. network that broke on us made me very sad. We crashed it instantly. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, uh, yeah. Ustream will be far, far more scalable and should treat us right. Uh, did I manage to talk you into uh, into actually uh, performing anything? Oh yeah, dude. I've been. A, I got. A, I got a success story and a fail story for you. Okay. Let's uh, let's hear the success story first. Okay. Well, uh, I've been doing the 
been doing the human chimney for a really long time, and I can't tell you how many of the ladies that I have impressed. And uh, it's a pretty you know, good opener. I find it. It's uh, it's really simple too, and it, it you know they're just like whoa that was so awesome and you know I'm, yeah. All right, so uh, and 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 let me hear the uh, the epic fail. Oh God. Um, well, I was trying to do the blockhead. And I took a I took a Q tip, and I did it once, you know, in my in my bedroom, and I was like, okay, I got this. So I went By out way, and I got a nail. Already, already, there's it, a million stories that begin with trying a magic trick once in your room and assuming it's go time, and you're ready to uh, to rock with it. Yep. Yep. So I so I got I went out and I got a nail and a hammer. Uh huh. And I went over to a friend's house, and they were having a huge party, and I now, went to go what I can do. Real, real quick, did you try it with a Q-tip or with a real nail before? Just a Q-tip. Okay, okay. all right. So you went, you went from tweaking a Q-tip in to, uh, to, full on, uh, to full on, hey, I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to go now, and, uh, and went to a party yeah. full on with the hammer and the nail. How did it go? Uh-huh. Um, well, I thought I had it up under that uh, – up under that membrane, that flap of skin. Oh no! And I didn't. Oh. And so I got it in there, and I, I got it in there, and I thought I had it in, and then I got the hammer, and I started tapping, and pretty soon blood started pouring out of my nose. Oh, and, dude, there is and, nothing worse than bleeding while you're performing. <laughs> How did you cover? They were like, what did is you that say? part of the trick? So, so what did you say? You're like, hey guys, want to see something cool? And then you just smash your face with a yeah. hammer and start bleeding all over the place. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, and did and, they uh, applaud? They, <laughs> no. Um, a, a girl I used to date was there, and she was freaking out. She was, oh my god, are you okay? And everybody else was just sitting there going, is that part of the trick? Oh my god! And, uh, so your ex girlfriend? Blood, blood all over my shirt. Oh, dude, that's awesome. And, all right, now remember, deny. Until you die, dude. As far as anyone needs to know, that's just a trick. You're like, isn't that sick? Wasn't that realistic? And then, just, yeah. and then, at the very least, now all of a sudden you're not a chump. Then, then you're just sort of like a, a weirdo. And I guess it, I, I think it'd yeah. be better to be a weirdo than, uh, than the chump there. So, what about sure uh, one more quick question before uh, before we uh, uh, move on to the next caller? Uh, did you, uh, you, you've had a lot of success. Oh, wait, and he's gone. Oh no, that's somebody calling in there. Not gone. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, did you, since, since the, well, I guess, so you, you, the, the, the human chimney you've had a lot of success with, but yeah, the, absolutely. uh, but the blockhead you've had only failure. Did you try it again or did you give it up after that? I have not tried it again. Um, <laughs> I have, I've kind of, uh, you know, that was, that was two weeks ago almost. And, uh, I've been kind of uh, a little bit. A little gun shy. Yeah, then. I don't blame you. All right. Well, hey, thanks again, Bit J Pettacrew. Um, keep in touch, and I will catch you later, man. All right, dude. See ya. Right. Take care. There we go. Okay, guys, we got time for about one more call, and then I'm gonna wrap things up here. Um, once again, you are, you could call eight six six eat fire. That's a lovely shot of uh, that screen grab there. Uh, they, oh, that's, yeah, that's, uh, some people use a, a cocktail straw or a cocktail stick. I find the cocktail trick works really well. Here we go. We got a call from, is it, is it Sinar? Is it, uh, is that, is that your name? Yeah, it's Sinar. Sinar. Where are you from, Sinar? Uh, in, uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. In Jacksonville, yeah. Florida. Do you have a video camera or are you voice only? Oh, uh, wait. I got the camera. There he see is. if it, uh, will come on here. Hang on, we're going to wait for it. We're going to see some mojo there. Wait for it. And there he is. It's Sinar. How's, or Sinar. Wait, you just said it and I immediately forgot. Actually, just, just Dave. How about that? Dave. What's going on, Dave? Uh, not too much. Just uh, enjoying a drink myself. And I uh, was wondering, what's the uh, best trick you use in bars to uh, get the free drinks? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, and to be honest, the, uh, the thing to remember is that uh, there are different classes of drinks. I think of it as kind of a hook, a line, a sinker. I think of the hook as the opening effects and the purpose of an opener is just to grab people's attention and you want something that's going to make them say do it again and once they say do it again never never do it again uh, once is a, once is a trick twice is a lesson instead gotcha. you do something else so I'll start with uh, with like the the human chimney and uh, and then they'll say what do that again and I'll say oh did you like that well here check this one out and then I'll do the the jack-o-lantern 
and, uh, and, and they're like, oh, you know, what else you got? And then uh, that's when we move into the line. The line are, are filler tricks that, that are uh, performers. They're, 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 you know, there's the opening, and then you kind of you, you keep them going. You've got to keep them interested. But then the sinker is the first puzzle trick. That's when, and you've got to end over the course of the first three or four tricks, you're going to get a read on what kind of person they are. And you're going to tell, like, uh, uh, some guys tend to, be, uh, tend to be a little more analytical. Um, some girls tend to be into certain things. Uh, and, and I let that dictate which of the puzzle tricks I set up uh, that's going to be the most frustrating, that's going to be right on the tip of their brain that they're going to feel like they should be able to figure out but not quite do it. Uh, once we nail that, that's when, uh, that's when usually I'll take a break or something. I'll set it up, and I'll find an excuse to be like, hey, i got to go to the bathroom or whatever. And when I come back, they're like, okay, i got to know. And that's when you, you sell them the answer. You pretty much you say, you say okay, uh, I'd be happy to. It's just, you know, I'm very thirsty. So, so not really one trick, but uh, just having like a whole series so you got kind of a performance going for them. Correct, correct. A lot of people say, you know, they'll watch one episode of Scam School, and they're like, I don't get it. How's that going to get you a beer? And it's, it's the art of, of, of having an arsenal and streaming together uh, a, a few of them, finding the right situation so you can bring everything together. And then uh, uh, once, once you have that first moment, though, that first moment when they give you a beer uh, in order to get the answer to a puzzle, you've got them totally nailed from that point on because they've, nice. they've set a precedent of pay for play. So they bring you a beer, and, and, and you're good. And then the moment they say, hey, well, you got another one or show us something else, uh, then it's just a matter of, of you just keep literally be like, oh, hey, uh, I'd be happy to. Do you mind hooking me up with another beer or, you know, and then and people, it's like, it's like you're a machine. They're, they give, they give <laughs> you a beer and the entertainment. You're their, you're their entertainment for the night. Yeah. Have you tried any of these in person or are you more of a theoretical watcher? Uh, I've been watching so far. I've tried the, uh, try, been working on the human blockhead thing with, uh, with some Q-tips. Uh-huh. And uh, other than that, uh, haven't tried any of them uh, in a bar yet. Try you haven't tried friends, the uh, uh, short change in, house, in real life yet, or uh, or uh, fraud, or <laughs> no, you haven't no, tried no, any I haven't of the yet. Well, that's fair enough. Okay, uh, one other quick question before I let you go it was Dave, right? Yeah. Uh, Dave, uh, how do you watch uh, Scam School? Because I, I, it's amazing. I find that so many people watch it on uh, a TiVo or uh, or just on their iPhone, or they just watch it on the Flash. How do you I'll watch be honest, it? It depends on on where I'm at and who's around. Uh, my roommate and I, we both watch it on the TiVo. Okay. Uh, if I'm just uh, in my bedroom, just chilling out, I'll watch it on the laptop or on the the nice widescreen monitor I get, um, or on the Zoom. Fantastic. All right. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Dave. I'm going to let you go. All right. Take care, buddy. All right, man. You too. All right. And there we have that. Okay, guys, we are back to open lines. I think I'm going to take one more call. Uh, Somebody says chick call in, which is not uh, a terrible idea. Uh, Somebody is asking me in the the, uh, chat room if it's possible to fool people once the tricks go public. And let me tell you, the tricks are already public. There's not a single thing I'm teaching you guys that's not instantly Googleable. That's not something uh, thousands and thousands of people know. Uh, hold on, Andy. I'm going to bring you on, but I want you to uh, sit tight for a second. Uh, and uh, we're entering an age of information inefficiency, where that's where magic lies. And that's part of the reason I encourage you guys to learn several of these effects, because you want to be in a position where, uh, like I say, I open with stuff that's kind of unbustable, where even if, even if they bust it or they know how it's done, then I bring them in and I teach them to it and I go on to another one, because I know there's no way they know as many of these as I do, and I'm going to fool them at some point. And, uh, and that's where uh, the information and efficiency. All right, we got Andy on the line. How's it going, Andy? Hey, pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Where are you calling from? Uh, Greenville, Michigan. Fantastic. And what can I do for you, sir? Well, I used to do a lot of close-up magic at bars and whatnot. Um, and then I kind of got hounded every time I went out and just kind of got out of it because it just gets ridiculous when you're out there with your friends a lot, you know? Yeah. What do you do to combat um, just being hounded all night to do stuff? Magic one monkey trick syndrome. Yeah. MMS, it's a bigger problem than you think. Magic monkey syndrome. Once you uh, prove yourself a competent performer, uh, I used to get a really annoyed over this kind of thing because, um, uh, you know, it's like uh, uh, there's something about magic. When people say, what do you do for a living? You say, oh, I'm a magician. First thing they say is they instantly say, oh, do a trick for me, right? But uh, mm-hmm. it's not like if you were an accountant 
They'd say, hey, what do you do? Oh, I'm an accountant. Oh, you got to do my taxes for me right now. Come on. No, just a little bit. Let me see your thing. There's something about uh, magic that makes people feel like they can uh, just ask you to perform it anytime you want. And uh, I used to have a chip on my shoulder about that kind of thing. I used to be really annoyed, especially once I started doing this professionally. Uh, when I was an amateur, I was happy to perform as much as they wanted. But once I started doing it professionally, it was sort of like, you know, I don't want to you know, unless there's a paycheck involved, I don't feel like working for free. But that had a lot more to do with me kind of building up my self-esteem as a performer and feeling like I deserve to get paid to do what I do for a living. Uh, nowadays, I'm pretty happy to, I keep two or three things on me at all times so that I can perform for people just to, uh, just to get somebody says just pass gas really loud when <laughs> they ask. I like that. Um, but, uh, uh, so, so, so here's what I do is um, I will usually make people ask twice and I'll even say, I say, you know, a lot of people say they want to see magic, but uh, you know, the situation doesn't let them really focus on it. Uh, you know, if you're serious about it, grab me later in the night and I'll definitely show you something, especially in a party situation because people will, they'll ask you to perform and then they'll instantly start trying to screw up your trick. Have you noticed that? Oh, definitely. I had a guy grab a deck of, uh, cards right out of my hands just to see what they were and and just trash the trick as as much as he could just trash the trick it it, it kills me and and the worst are uh, and and we'll ask the folks in the forums for those of you guys who have tried performing a scam school effect uh tell me if you're with me on this one is it not true that performing for friends friends are the worst audience you could possibly have for doing any kind of uh, magic effect is that true we're gonna I get more of a friend of a friend is the worst one because they're the one who's got the balls to go up there and really do it where your friends will kind of respect you a little bit in that aspect. Yeah, that's a good point because you have somebody who doesn't really want to see your trick and uh, somebody's trying to force feed this wonder on them. Yeah, there we go. We got, uh, we've got uh, friends suck. <laughs> uh, true. God, yes, I'm a chump. I even had a guy, I, I always say, you know, I'll, I'm not going to do any magic if, if this is the way it's going to be, you know, if, if you want to keep hounding me and whatnot. I'm just going to stop right there. And usually that will get the majority of people because everybody will jump on them and say, you know, hey, don't, don't mess with this because you don't want to see it stop yet. But yeah. every so often you get one guy who just, just goes AWOL. Yeah, and there are people. And, and to be honest, that's part of the reason that I decided to uh, – <laughs> you guys are killing me with the request for the, the unspiked hair. That's, oh, my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> okay, there we go. We got that out of our system. Um, the, uh, 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 yeah, it, it, it drives me nuts, uh, but that's a very good technique to, uh, to get the, the, the troops rallied on your side is to kind of polarize. If you feel like you've got enough of the group around you on your side, like let's say everybody's mostly enjoying you, uh, maybe a little bit of razzing and you've got one person who's really screwing you over, you can usually do something like that where you're like, Hey man, look, I'm trying to, you know, these guys want to see something. If you're going to be like that, you know, we could just do this some other time. And that's when you'll get everybody to, uh, to, to, to turn on them. Yeah, definitely. It's just, I, I went a whole year without doing anything just because I hated that going into a bar and just being hounded the whole time, you know, even if you're just there just to chill out. Yeah. Are you back onto uh, performing now? Are you um, I've, off the wagon? I've kind of stepped back up the last couple weeks now. Um, I got some, some of my buddies are now starting to get married, so they want me to do some stuff at weddings and whatnot. So, and I've jumped head into scam school here too so i love watching it so it's kind of got me back yeah, as, on track with as somebody it. who's already familiar uh with magic and somebody who performs magic uh you, you know one of the things i've tried to do with scam school is is make everything i do something that me as a working professional would actually perform and in fact when i go out i actually do a whole bunch of stuff straight out of scam school do you do you find a lot of material that you weren't already familiar with or is it sort of as a magician you're kind of like oh this is old hat well, some of the stuff, I, I like the scam school stuff because it's, it's anytime, anywhere type stuff. So if you get caught, you know, with nothing on you or anything like that, you've got a skill right there ready to jump up at any, any possible time. And it's, it's usually something that's good enough where, you know, it's not leaving them hanging. Right, right. And that's the other thing is, is uh, uh, we, we, we've, we've talked about this uh, with, some, with some other folks. Um, we kind of have tried really hard, and we're coming up on 50 episodes of having pulled it off, but we've tried to, to have... Uh, episodes where uh, everything we teach does not involve any kind of preparation or gimmick or I anything you even have to keep on you. Uh, mm -hmm. Would we be crossing a line for positive or for negative to to actually teach something, you know, really kick-ass trick and say, okay, look, you're going to have to glue these two things together like this to make it work and carry this on you? 
there's a there's a fine line there, and I think um, if if it's a gafted trick or something, that might be a little too much. Versus like um, I do tricks with like a shoelace where I'll actually ask somebody to take off their shoelace, and normally they're happy to, and and it's you know one of their shoelaces that you can do something with, um, or borrowing something from somebody. I don't think that that's too terribly overboard, but um, if you were to like um, make something to do it. It's, I think that's hit or miss. It's almost another show in itself to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and also, you know, uh, that's the other thing, too, is that they also have to be uh, concepts that we can explain in only uh, uh, five to seven minutes, which is mm -hmm. uh, another challenge on top of that. Uh, somebody uh, in, the, in the chat room is suggesting that as long as it's something you don't have to pay money for, then that's fine if it's something you can make at home, which is uh, in true Internet fashion, as long as it's free, then we're fine with it. Definitely. All right. Well, hey, appreciate the call, Andy. Yep, thanks a lot. All right, guys. I think, uh, I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, keep in mind, this is only supposed to be kind of a uh, heads-up uh, start thing. What I would love you guys to do is, uh, is think of um, – uh, that's interesting. Somebody said once a month it would be cool if you did a show on the longer trick. Um, I'm sorry. I'm reading the chat room as we go. Uh, because I'm about to. <laughs> Somebody says, I tried the short change at Best Buy. They didn't think it was funny. Nice. Okay, here's what I want you guys to do. I am going to give you a little bit of a homework assignment. I want you guys to come up with specific suggestions or questions. Uh, I want to, especially for some of the, the stuff that involves manipulation, if you uh, grab yourself a webcam, uh, practice the human blockhead. If you have trouble with something, go back. We got 40 some odd episodes of Scam School. Find something that you think is good, but you haven't been able to make it work for yourself and plan on calling in. I know I shoulder most of the blame here because I sort of sprang this on you guys out of nowhere, but uh, uh, definitely in the future, I'd love to, to have a lot of, uh, of audience interaction with you guys calling in, actually showing video. Uh, and I tell you what, um, I guess, I don't know, is it too soon to try this again tomorrow? You guys would be up for that again? I, I'll have to keep them shorter if we're going to do them quite like every day or every day for a few days. Uh, trick before you go. You know what? I, I thought about that. I would love to actually do some performing for you guys. Maybe that's what I'll do tomorrow. I've got a couple of pretty killer uh, card routines that I'd love to do just to goof off and show off for you guys. But, uh, but we could do it. Tomorrow, what time tomorrow? That's the question, Travis. Uh, i tell you what, best thing to do, for those of you who are not following uh, me on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash schwood. That's S-H-W. O -O -D. We have a link for it up at uh, schwood.com, S-H-W-O-O-D.com. You can sign up on the uh, email list and get notified as soon as uh, updates are made, especially to the tour schedule. By the way, uh, most of the events I go to, I can usually get people in for free, uh, usually as long as we're talking four or five people. So drop me an email. If you see me in a town nearby, uh, hit me up, and I can very likely get you into the show. All right, guys, that is it for me. I will catch you guys uh, probably tomorrow. Go ahead and keep an eye on the Twitter feed, and uh, there's a good chance I'll be playing some uh, Left 4 Dead if you want to. Uh, if you want to join me out there, take care, guys.